Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Lamston uh, CPT session for career as a doctor. So, uh, Lamston is an organization of young people who share the same passion for assisting their fellow students and professionals uh, from different parts of the world. And students of different grades are offered assistance to pursue their dream in life. Various students, due to uh, incompetent facilities, opportunities in their own native areas, find the necessity to move to other cities to pursue their studies and career. And pursuing studies or hunting jobs in other cities opens a whole new can of worms. And in this, in their crusade, students often get trapped uh, in, in, into dilemmas such as which college to study, which course to opt for, and will engineering do the best for them, or should they opt for commerce, medical, and the list goes on for eternity. Uh, in all this chaos, uh, many students end up studying in wrong colleges uh, or schools, uh, or leaving uh, the idea altogether and returning back to their respective homes. So at Lumsden, uh, we connect students from remote areas to mentors and professionals at global level. So this uh, Lumsden Continuous uh, Professional Development uh, is uh, one of our initiatives that we are taking. So uh, today, um, as a frontline warrior, uh, we have uh, like uh, as, as an appreciation to the frontline warrior uh, during this extremely pandemic uh, emergency, we at Lumsden are focusing on essential service. So we have here actually uh, uh, this here, and uh, let's uh, maybe I will just uh, give the. Uh, give the mic open to Ajay Ajay, if you could introduce yourself. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tunduk, for uh, actually, uh, you know, bringing up uh, this opportunity to me, because uh, I have always been looking forward to, you know, reaching out uh, to my fellow Ladakhi students. But this platform actually, you know, uh, helps uh, even uh, any other, any, any career professional to actually reach out to the target audience and I'm really grateful to be here uh, today and um, I will be speaking about uh, career as a doctor and then I will uh, welcome the questions from uh, the students, the participants and uh, I would just urge everyone to not hesitate at all uh, to ask questions at the end of my talk. That's all. Hello, I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can. Uh, shall I start my talk already? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, Julie, and good evening. I'm uh, Dr. Sonam Yangzis. I'm uh, an ophthalmologist uh, currently practicing as a consultant in cornea cataract and refractive services uh, in uh, Chandigarh. And I'm an alumni of PGI Chandigarh. So, I'm going to speak uh, about uh, career as a doctor. And my talk is ba basically directed towards uh, uh, the youngsters who are uh, preparing for the NEET exam, class 11th, 12th, and those who are uh, in the early um, uh, years of medical school. So first question is, why a doctor? Okay, uh, why uh, do you need to become a doctor? Basically, the world needs you. And according to WHO, there is only one government or allopathic doctor for almost 11,000 people in India, while the recommended ratio is just one is two thousand. So uh, the world is in a dire need, especially our country is in a dire need of doctors. So yeah, you are very much wanted. So on an individual uh, level, uh, why one wishes to become a doctor? For most of us, it's basically our intuition or may maybe a calling because uh, you know, the doctor's job is more to do with compassion towards humanity or a desire to help and serve the mankind. So our, our profession is extremely noble and uh, it's uh, nothing it's more rewarding than actually, you know, elevating the pain and the suffering of a person who is actually ailing. Apart from that, a doctor's job also has a lot of diverse career opportunities, which I will be uh, touching upon in the upcoming slides. First of all, I would like to, you know, uh, tell about the steps of how to become a doctor. It starts from uh, class 11th. Right after class 10, you need to choose these three subjects that is physics, chemistry, and biology as your main subjects in class 11th and 12th. After passing this exam uh, of class 12 boards, you need to sit for a national eligibility come entrance test. 
and qualify this examination in order to get a medical college assigned to you. Right after that, you get into the medical school and you do five and a half years of training, which includes one year of rotatory compulsory internship. And lo and behold, after all that, you get this medical degree and you get the most coveted title of doctor attached right with your name for all your life. I'm going to briefly touch upon this national eligibility come entrance exam that is NEAT. It is conducted by the National Testing Agency. So this is a snapshot from their website. So National Testing Agency now includes all the medical colleges, including the private medical colleges and also institutes like AIMS. So this is something new. And according to the National Medical Commission Act 2019, even institutes like AIMS, New Delhi and Jibmer Pondicherry are included in NEET. Earlier AIMS and Jibmer used to conduct a separate examination on their own. Now it's all covered under NEET. So uh, NEET covers not only the MBBS seats, but there are other seats like Bachelor of Dentistry, Ayurveda, Unani Medicine, Homeopathy seats. They are also available under the same umbrella of examination. So uh, it's a pen and paper based exam held once in a year. This year, I think it's scheduled somewhere in July, but because of the coronavirus situation, one has to keep uh, an update of the exact dates. Again, this is a snapshot from their website, actually distribute, telling you the uh, distribution of questions and the marks. So biology holds like a major chunk that is up to 90 questions come from biology and 45 each from physics and chemistry. The mode of uh, language could be English or Hindi as well and various other regional languages also are available for you to appear in. I would advise my uh, like all the students to go through the website in and read it in detail in order to know the intricate details about this exam. So again, you know, NEET is definitely the mo uh, most important platform through which a person gets into medical school. But yes, uh, some of us, if you're not able to qualify for NEET, all is not lost because uh, there are a lot of opportunities abroad, like countries like China, Russia, they provide a quite an economical, uh, I would say package kind of a seat which is actually MCI recognized. And I would um, advise anybody who wants to opt for these options abroad, they should do a brief research to find out the quality of medical education provided by these institutes. And uh, again, you know, once you're done with your MBBS, you need to pass this foreign medical graduate examination once you come back to India in order to qualify, in order to practice in India. So that's important. Again, you know, uh, my talk as it is, it's not uh, going to concentrate on what books to read and what all uh, material to cover and all, because that, that is all basically to do with the students who are immediately, you know, like uh, appearing or those students who have just passed the exams, they would be the best guide for the students of class 11th and 12th to know the right amount of like the right amount of subjects or the other topics to cover up, um, in. For me, I would broadly cover it. I would say that there is no one size fits all mantra for you guys. Everybody, you know, uh, even if you are not a medical graduate, medical professional or so, anybody for any profession for that matter, if you want to succeed in your profession, uh, you should leave your comfort zone. Without leaving the comfort zone, you, if you say that I want to live comfortably at the same time, I want to succeed in life. I don't think that's a possibility, basically in any field for that matter. Again, uh, you know, one should never give up. One should keep on persevering towards the goal. And uh, my school teacher in in, uh, in Lamnu school, you know, in, uh, used to tell us that, you know, instead of slogging for hours and hours and hours in front of the books and not grasping anything, more important for you is to, you know, put quality study, you know, even if you are putting in limited amount of hours dedicating to your books, but you should do it wholeheartedly with full attention. So it's something like this. She used to put it like, do not put hours into studying, but instead put the study into those hours. So I would advise the same to you guys. And also giving your best shot. As far as I'm concerned, if a student is dedicating his uh, precious years uh, uh, to medicine, like if you want to uh, uh, you know, dedicate uh, yourself to becoming a doctor and are pursuing the medical subjects, so you should give in your best shot. It's not about like you know, doing it half-heartedly without much of a dedication. So I would say that anything worth doing is worth doing well. So go on guys, giving your best shot for this during the preparatory years. Coming briefly to my 
own experience after class 10th, I still dread when I remember, you know, those um, early first six months of class 11th, uh, because I uh, had just moved to Delhi uh, and uh, from LA and uh, basically, you know, I felt that most of my batchmates in Delhi already knew so many things, okay, they, they were aware of um, the subject, maybe they had covered already or so. So it was like a very difficult time for me. There was always a looming fear of uncertainty, yeah, whether I will be able to clear my exam, if I flung, what will happen and all that. Again, you know, you have that huge burden of meeting up the expectations of your family. And uh, there was totally lack, lack of, uh, you know, clear direction about the topics which I need to cover, books that I need to read and everything. And I feel right now that at this point of time, if I had a mentor, because I don't come from a family of doctors, so if that point of time, if I had a mentor who would have guided me and told me things could have been way more easy. But yes, nonetheless, during that time also, even if I had no sense of direction, clear cut, but I used to work very hard, blindly, you can say, but you know, that hard work was something which I always did, even if I did not have much of a guidance per se. So yeah, th that is very important. Now, I, now when I come to think of it, hard work is very, very important. So obstacles, again, you know, limited finances is one of the major obstacles a student may face because uh, the coaching classes are also quite expensive along with the school tuitions and everything. Again, study habits, one has to, you know, keep on improvising to improve your study habits and also your organizational skills as to how much time you're devoting to each subject and the topics which are hard, you should devote more time, topics which you already know, you know, you need to have those organizational skills. But these obstacles can always be overcome by one and only thing, again, my experience, guys, that is visualizing your future. Because I, what I did is like, um, you know, uh, it's something that I feel that students who are studying right now, having a goal in their mind, you should keep focusing on that goal till you reach up to that goal. Because, you know, if you don't know, you visualize your future, you're going to be overwhelmed by things that are happening around you and you may get disheartened. So if you think like, okay, fine, uh, 11th class, class 12th, and maybe a year or two during the preparatory time, you know, you may get, you know, dejected many a times. But again, at that point of time, if you visualize your future, what's going to happen two years from now, or what's going to happen five years from now, where do I will be? If you keep visualizing, if you see yourself, you know, as a professional somewhere helping out the people and everything. things around you at that point you know too small so guys please visualize your future do not get overwhelmed by struggles uh, during your preparatory years keep on working hard keep on persevering again you know the most confusing thing during your schooling is again well, we are uh, you know uh, totally uh, confused and bombarded with so many confusing questions whether you know because some students may not come from english uh, medium schools or background could be hindi or any other regional language and uh, some students may belong, uh, may have done all the schooling from government schools and for them to, uh, they, may, they might think they may not be able to catch up or any, uh, with other students from private schools or who have done coaching from other institutes or so. And some students prefer to do self-study, some do coaching, some do both. So again, again, the question is whether any of these things matter. So my answer is nothing else matters. It's your hard work and your perseverance. Something like it's not the size of the dog in the war but sides of the war in the dog that matter. It's what, how you perceive things that matter and rest of things do not matter. So coming to MBBS and the Bachelor of Dentistry course during an undergraduate years. So it's more or less like five and a half years of your youth, which you totally dedicate to learning. At this point of time, you know, guys, uh, since medicine is kind of a stretched out, uh, uh, you know, uh, duration of training. so. Uh, many a times, you know, your friends who uh, who had already started with you in other streams, they all they start earning, and you're still dependent on your family, and uh, you're not financially independent. So that may pinch a little, and you do get a little bit of stipend at the end of four and a half years of your training. So <laughs> things do get better eventually. And again, uh, one must remember that sleepless nights uh, become uh, becomes a norm for a medical graduate undergraduate first year being the hardest of all. And literally you have to sleep with the skeletons in your bed because you need to learn every uh, bone structure, the name of the bone and of uh, the 
the insertion and attachments of the bones. So many a times, you know, I think most of us uh, as under, undergraduates may have slept off with like a bunch of bones lying scattered all, all around your bed. But guys, things do get bitter eventually. I keep <laughs> insisting on that. So I'm going to touch upon uh, the basic subjects that uh, students uh, will come across, like once you do an MBBS thing. So I want to just, uh, you know, briefly touch upon this. So in the first year of your um, MBBS, we have uh, to cover three subjects. These three subjects are basically anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry. They are all about the normal functioning, the normal structures, and the normal biochemical reactions of the body. So you may recall this scene from Munabai MBBS, where you know people uh, are dreading to actually cut open the cadaver or so. So similar thing does happen, and we also have some of very like um, fond memories of many of our batchmates just collapsing on on their first day of dissection hall duty, you know, dissection hall um, classes, because <laughs> here you need to learn about the human body and each and every organ and remember so many like there's a whole jargon of medical information medical names that you need to memorize and everything so anatomy is all about that and it used to get like really really overwhelming for most of us i guess and physiology is about structure the functional or functioning of the human body so you read about that and biochemistry is more about the biochemical reactions along with the genetic aspect of it so first year after going through all the you know, remembering everything and uh, learning everything, you move on to the second year. Second year, you take a sigh of relief because this year is not just one year, it's almost stretching up to one and a half years, which covers uh, four subjects, pharmacology, microbiology, pathology, and forensic medicine. And interesting thing about this uh, second year posting is that your hospital clinical posting also starts. So you come across, you know, clinical ward rounds and everything. You see your seniors uh, dealing with patients. So it's a good feeling. And also you get in touch with the clinical aspect also. So uh, just briefly touching upon pharmacology is to do with the pharmaceutical, like the medicines and the drugs, learning about the chemical properties and their usages and everything. And microbiology uh, has multiple branches, sub-branches, that is uh, bacteriology, study of fungus, study of viruses, virology, study of the parasites, parasitology and everything. So <clears throat> right now we are facing this, um, you know, wild, widespread pandemic that is coronavirus. So it's basically the microbiologists and the virologists basically amongst the microbiologists, the virologists who are actually, you know, who have uh, in-depth knowledge about the coronavirus. Coming to pathology, it's all about uh, studying the details, cell, cell details. On the cellular level, you read about the diseases, okay? And uh, forensic medicine, I guess you guys must have seen those mystery no, um, mystery movies where you know thrillers and all where there, if there's a crime and the person goes there to investigate and you get the fingerprints you get the toxicology scans you get the blood scans and then you do an autopsy like a post-mortem sort of thing so this subject deals with all that so that's called forensic medicine so second year apart from the studies you know it is i'm going to continue so uh, coming to the uh, you know uh, second year uh, it's a year in which a medical uh, student becomes more relaxed because, you know, after going through the grilling session of first year with all the subjects, which are, uh, uh, which actually take a toll on you. And second year, it's like you breathe a sigh of relief because um, the, uh, the year is actually longer and uh, you are used to the system and the curriculum. And again, you know, I would uh, say, I would um, uh, uh, advise you guys, like the students to participate in the co-curricular activities like drama, sports, choreography, and, and various other um, uh, co-curricular uh, activities that uh, do take place in your respective colleges. And also um, uh, there's Pulse. Pulse is like one of the biggest, uh, I would say, uh, cultural fiesta that takes place in All India Institute, New Delhi, where graduates from all around the country, they gather, for almost a week long fiesta. So that is interesting. Apart from that, your, your college also organizes its own uh, mini fest, mega fest and all. So that is again, some we also have some fond memories of the, that time. So doctors also do have fun. We are all just not totally nerds. And yeah, uh, there are college trips and then we had those get togethers. Again, nerd alert, you have those group studies and library you know, meetings, which are really fun because we are not only learning, but we are making friends and thing. I have already covered the hospital posting part. Okay, so right after that, the first and the second year is basically considered the preclinical 
medicine okay uh, so there you are learning about uh, uh, medicine uh, in detail but that those streams basically uh, do not have any patient interaction right after that once you enter third year you uh, have the subjects which have to do with more more have to do with patient interaction starting from uh, ear nose and throat and ophthalmology that's my speciality uh, that is um, eyes and community medicine community medicine is also known as preventive and social medicine this subject is very interesting because it has to do with prevention you know you must have heard the adage like prevention is better than cure so this uh, subject actually uh, deals with this essence of prevention so here doctors go to the community and spread awareness about diseases and how to avoid the disease at the first place before it actually you know builds up in the body so community medicine and preventive social medicine deals with that after that we enter into the final year you guys must be aware of medicine surgery pediatrics and that is uh, child specialization and obstetrics and gynecology apart from that there are various other subjects like psychiatry anesthesia orthopedics dermatology radiology those these small subjects are also again you know clubbed in in the final year and you need to read all that so overall if you count the number of subjects it's total 19 subjects that you cover up in uh, four and a half years of your medical school training so of course that is needed because you are actually going to have uh, you are actually going to treat a human being so it's not a very small responsibility okay after finishing your four and a half years of uh, medical school training you do a compulsory rotary posting uh, internship in various clinical departments this is an optional thing because some students can uh, go for internship in uh, some other institute also not necessarily that you have to finish your internship from the same medical college as your um, uh, parent institute uh, but it is a compulsory thing nonetheless so uh, before uh, without you know, one year of internship you cannot get a medical degree and um, many of us like uh, uh, my uh, myself i came across my dream subject like ophthalmology i uh, attracted me during my internship itself looking at those you know operation do, being done on those tiny uh, little uh, eyes and how you know precise and how uh, delicate you, a doctor is supposed to be go about you know in performing surgery so that actually uh, appealed to me so yeah you may come across your dream subject during your internship and even if it doesn't doesn't matter and uh, basic clinical training surgical exposure and everything is again you can uh, get through uh, that in internship time itself you get to treat a patient because you, this is the time you actually get a feeling that you are a doctor because you uh, actually get to have a first-hand patient management. You are actually treating a patient or you're actually managing a patient. You have a patient admitted uh, with you and you have to look after the patient. So yes, uh, this is a very nice feeling that you get at the end of your MBBS during your internship. And stipend, as I already mentioned, that you do get a stipend also while you do. It may not be that high, but yes, it is good enough to sustain you. <laughs> okay, so after internship, you have multiple opportunities i'm uh, sorry after mbbs you get um, uh, some students prefer to do specialization they want to move ahead and do specialization in respect to some fields but uh, even uh, by doing just mbbs you have a lot of opportunities one is to join as the medical officer at um, various government hospitals and uh, also uh, some uh, have the nursing home so they want to open up their own nursing home and then start their practice Medical colleges offer junior uh, resident or junior house job um, uh, uh, posts also, and various research institutes may have posts for you know junior research fellow as um, on a contract basis. So one can exploit that option. WHO, UNICEF also have uh, job opportunities, uh, short term and long term for um, um, medical graduates. And various laboratories like pharmaceutical companies, biotechnology companies may also have a lot of jobs lined up for doctors. Those who are interested in um, social service, they can join some NGO and do a lot of uh, social service. And yes, uh, last but not the least, uh, some, some of us have this patriotic, uh, you know, desire. They want to do something for the country apart from like, you know, the mankind per se. So yes, you can join army and other paramilitary forces. After doing your MPPS, you have to come uh, do this short service commission SSC exam. You have to clear that exam. And then you get a rank of an officer at the same time you uh, are continuing uh, your practice as a doctor. So that is also an option available post MBBS. Again, opportunities abroad, there are a lot of opportunities for doctors uh, in uh, 
all spheres basically so uh, some of the developed countries like us you have to uh, have this uh, clear this usmle exam other countries you have their own licensing examinations so it's not necessary for you to do mbbs abroad even after doing M uh, your mbbs from uh, india you can go ahead and practice there only after finishing you know, or completing the licensing exam then you can uh, work uh, in those countries as well some of the doctors from india prefer to you know uh, do uh, uh, how uh, like uh, prefer to join uh, in the middle east because middle east provides a very plump uh, and lucrative options uh, a very good package to the doctors because they need more doctors there so uh, looking at that many doctors prefer to go and work few years there and then maybe come back later on in future and a uh, majority of us decide to stay back and serving our own country okay so that's all about mbbs only and post uh, graduation as a mbbs one can go ahead and uh, pursue this uh, post grad uh, continue with this so we have um, uh, yeah uh, so yeah, after MBBS, uh, I think nowadays more and more uh, medical graduates are going for this post-graduation degree uh, to uh, get a specialized, uh, you know, uh, to go through the specialized course. That is either a Master of Surgery or a uh, Doctorate of Medicine course. It's a three years course that uh, leads to um, uh, one get a postgraduate degree in either surgery or medicine. And uh, it is specifically spe uh, specified to different specialties. And uh, for this also, you need to sit for an exam. And again, uh, various institutes uh, have for their own um, entrance exams. That is the big institutes like PGI, uh, AIMS, and um, Jipmer Pondicherry. They have their um, separate uh, exam for post-graduation uh, training. Uh, while uh, for All India Basis, you have this National Board of Education, NBE, which organizes the uh, MDMS courses exam. Again, that is held twice a year. Rest aims and uh, PGI exams all are held twice a year. So, uh, a doctor after a successful completion of uh, the MD or MS course is eligible to work as a specialist surgeon or a specialist physician. Even beyond that, some subjects do offer super specialization courses that is DM and MCH. Again, varying from two to two and three or uh, two to three years. And um, again, this this is not something uh, which is compulsory, but yes, optional. And some of the courses may not have a DMMCH. Then fellowships are available if one wants to venture deeply and maybe specialize in that specific field more. You can do a fellowship uh, from various institutes that offer these. I'm not able to go to my okay. Yeah, sure. So again, you know, once you uh, join as a uh, uh, postgraduate so you are called a junior resident so you are a resident the reason being because you reside completely in the hospital you're expected to be there all the time and um, during residency we again face a lot of challenges because we are an essential service our uh, services and our skills are essential in the face of global calamities and uh, the calamity that we are facing right now that is COVID-19 coronavirus uh, we are uh, at the front line. We have to be present there at all times and uh, dealing with this um, emergency. Not only this emergency, other emergencies also, even um, without the coronavirus time, like earlier, a doctor is always supposed to be present in the front line for any kind of emergency. And uh, situations like stay at home, which is applicable to majority of the people, uh, this is not applicable for us. And um, not only that, various other um, festivities or celebrations like closer parties may not be for us uh, because we may not be able to attend those if you are posted in uh, your ward or your emergency duty is there so you cannot actually be there so of course um, you know it comes at the cost of limited personal life so you need to prioritize your choices and the schedule could be chaotic at times uh, with um, you know duty hours extending from uh, you know 36 hours or even beyond that at times you are expected to be available 24/7 365 days of the year and uh, you know, sharing my experience basically during my <laughs> post graduation in PJ also during my senior residency throughout okay for like six years uh, there was not even a single festivity like uh, like Diwali festival for that matter which is a big festival in India and also a uh, time of uh, holidays uh, in uh, all around the country none of me and my friends actually happened to celebrate Diwali or the Shara because during those festivities you get extra duties because there are more calamities, there are more accidents during that time of the year. 
so more and more doctors are needed and you have longer duty hours in fact but this is something which does not deter us from you know uh, taking up this thing because this is what gives you you know that uh, uh, passion this is what gives you the purpose of life so yes any one of you who shares the same passion yes this is the job and this is the career for you yeah apart from the challenges we do have our own share of fun i have already mentioned the festivals the outings co curricular activities and um, also the get togethers that we have after our ward rounds you know uh, at the end you know after slogging the whole day in the operating room performing surgeries at the end of the thing you have you can order in pizza and all of us just relax together we have celebrations like completing our exam or maybe performing the first independent surgery together so there are various life uh, milestones that come up in the life of a medical graduate and a post graduate and even beyond that which you celebrate in your own special way so this is just uh, like you know a few photographs which i have put in me with my friends after i did my first independent cataract surgery i took out my friends for a little uh, treat this is us all in the or uh, having some small party i guess and this is me uh recently this is uh like i'm operating uh, on an eye uh, with a heads on display of um, this is the latest innovation that uh, it's being used so it's like this okay you start from uh, small and then you can move on to do bigger things in life and yeah uh the most important thing again you know i want to stress uh, stress upon is research because uh, a doctor can it's not being a doctor is not all about uh, looking after a patient but also you know utilizing that knowledge and putting it to good use in the form of research so research is very close to my heart because uh, i uh, did my in my graduation post graduation from pgi which is a uh, uh, institute for basically a uh, research institute and i'm really grateful to my mentors or my teachers in pgi who actually pushed me or motivated me to you know publish papers or write more and um, i learned a lot from them so research gives a plenty of um, you know a learning opportunity to you and if you are focusing more on your uh, you know subject of your interest it gives you a better scope and also more visibility you know and people um, who are competing with you for any job or uh, for that matter a professional position you get a, a upper hand or you get an edge over them because even if they have the same degree like you but your research can actually you know uh, give you an upper hand and you uh, will excel in that field and so it improves your resume and it builds up your confidence mm -hmm. and uh, when you go all around the world uh, presenting your uh, research and uh, you're representing your country and you're representing your institute so that is a uh, very fulfilling for you as a researcher as a young researcher for that matter and you get to meet a lot of experts from all around the world uh, unfortunately this year we are not able to travel anywhere but yes platforms like this like zoom meetings we have been having our own webinars and uh, meetings and zoom meetings and people all over the world are connecting on one platform so yes this is again a big opportunity and we have to improvise accordingly so uh, if our student is interested in research and they want to present their paper somewhere we have the icmr the csir and the dbt they actually uh, provide you know travel grant including your travel plus your um, you know air tickets and like including your stay also uh, uh, provided your research is valuable and it ha it has meaning to it so yes a young researcher can also opt and exploit this option more so this is just a snapshot of myself at various points and uh, presenting my uh, research publications in uh, various on various platforms all around the world yeah so uh, for a doctor it's all about constant planning it's all about uh, discipline you have to be disciplined you have to be punctual and uh, again a learning thing a doctor never ceases to learn for a doctor it's always about learning new things and improving yourself training yourself and being up to date with the latest technology latest innovation and not to get obsolete so that you can give the best care to your patient so i'm concluding with the take home message that there is no substitute to hard work my dear friends and please visualize your future whenever you face an obstacle and always keep a positive attitude about everything questions are welcome and uh, i would i think like um, amongst the participants uh, we have uh, dr sensen uh if she's there if you let me know if you're there because you know uh, i feel 
I have actually shared my perspective. If she could briefly, um, you know, share her, uh, uh, you know, experience a little bit early on in her career, maybe when she was in class 10th or 11th. So that would be nice for the students to listen to. After, after this, we can, you know, uh, have a question answer session. Okay. Dr. Senzel is so, actually a senior resident in All India Institute of Medical Sciences in New Delhi, and she is a practicing a radiologist. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everyone. Thanks uh, for joining. For joining. Yeah. Uh, okay. First of all, I would like to tell you, uh, tell others, maybe they, they don't know. So, as uh, 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 Palkit, so she is again a doctor uh, and mm. pretty much. Uh, in line with her elder sister, that's yes. Sonia mm -hmm. Angus. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you, you guys are doing really great uh, in terms of all the uh, medical things, and uh, you have always been inspiration since childhood. So thanks for joining in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Tundub and Lamsan for everything that you do. Thank you, Dr. Sono, for the uh, meticulous presentation. It was there was a lot of uh, attention to detail. I must say. So uh, coming to having a mentor, how it makes a difference, it makes a huge difference, I would say. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, by the end of 10th year, uh, 10th class, after our both exams, I was pretty certain that, you know, I want to pursue medicine as my profession. So uh, in 11th class, I had to choose an optional subject. Uh, we, I would have chosen mathematics by default because that's what we usually do. But uh, my sister suggested me, why not take biotechnology instead of mathematics? So that, that uh, really helped me in a few ways. I'll tell you how. Uh, in 11th and 12th class, when I was actually preparing for my uh, entrance exam as well, while attending the school, it uh, gave me a few extra hours in hand so I can uh, focus on my primary subjects. And also, secondly, because biotechnology has a lot of application in medicine, uh, down the line, when I was doing medicine or doing MBBS, during that time, again, the same topics tend to come up. And because I was already aware of the concepts behind it and the molecular basis and everything, so it, I did have, an, uh, on many occasions, some extra edge compared to my batchmates. So, yeah, so that's how. And secondly, even early on in MBBS life, once you get into the medical field, um, if you have a mentor, it really helps you because you know exactly what to expect from it. And uh, I did get a lot of guidance on what to read, exactly how to approach uh, trying to read because the syllabus is enormous, it's vast. You cannot possibly read everything. So I have always had my mentor, that is my sister. So uh, for all of those uh, who would in, in a few years, I'm sure will be uh, in one of the other medical colleges, I would like to advise you to go find mentors, talk to them, talk to your seniors and indulge more with friends who have other mentors if you don't directly find one. So yeah, and be connected, okay? Just pull your social networking thread, do whatever, but yeah, stay connected. And secondly, um, one more thing that I wanted to point out was, uh, I know there are many of us, many of you students there who have been preparing and uh, having multiple attempts trying to clear the entrance exams. So if you're not able to do it, so that is okay, okay? You don't have to think that this is the end of life uh, and feel hopeless. Don't lose hope, don't lose your heart. Don't think this is the end of life. You guys are still young and there are a lot of other options and I'm sure Lamstan will take it up in the coming few weeks. And um, yeah, if not a doctor, you'll definitely excel in something else as long as you're hardworking. So that is one thing. I guess I should not take um, any more time. Let's just maybe take some questions and continue. We can take up questions uh, on the uh, Zoom platform and we have shared our Instagram handles also. Uh, so anyone interested later on, if you want to uh, post any questions and you know, uh, any doubt that comes up to you guys, you can always uh, you know, message us on our Instagram handles. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Uh, it's uh, really good to have you both on the platform, really. Actually, our intention was to invite you separately, but <laughs> anyhow, you got, got together <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah. I, I would say one thing. I, I mean, okay, I can uh, definitely register for another one, but then it has to be a very limited uh, population or very limited group of audience because she has already covered most of the doctor-related thing. So it has to be mm -hmm. someone who's specifically oriented to radiology. So I think yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the idea going forward. So this, this was more of a holistic session, I would say which had few the yeah. school students and a uh, few uh, uh, students who were doing MBBS as well. So yeah, uh, th thank you. Uh, thank you both really uh, for attending today's and hosting this uh, today's session. 
and now a question answers uh, it's open for all uh, i will unmute you uh, it's your choice really you can uh, write in the chat box or you can ask the question to yourself if you want Yes, I've unmuted you. Uh, <clears throat> you might need to unmute from yourself, uh, your site, uh, all the participants, and uh, you are free to ask questions now. Please don't shy away from asking any questions. Yeah, yeah please, uh, participants, please ask uh, questions. Uh, do not hesitate. We are here for you guys. And also, uh, you know, you can ask questions in any language, Ladakhi, um, yeah, Hindi, anything, anything. Anything, anything is fine. And if you're shying away, just uh, you can send a private message here on the chat to me or anyone else as well in the group. Okay, so yeah. Uh, on one of the uh, registrations that we have got some questions, maybe I will take those questions initially. So uh, just after doing MBBS, uh, how much options are there in terms of domain? Like, uh, uh, and what are the most ideal domains uh, where one can do like uh, uh, yourself in uh, the eye specialist side and actually uh, actual gets uh, from a radiologist side. So which is the most optimum domain where uh, one can uh, go or explore or uh, what would you say about that? That's one question that I got. Basically, uh, if uh, it's only right after MBBS uh, without any specialized training. So um, uh, right after MBBS, one is uh, trained enough to uh, practice as a general physician. Okay, so you uh, do deal with um, the basic, um, I, I would say, uh, baseline basic uh, treatment protocol or the basic treatment of uh, I would say general uh, uh, body per se but anything specialized okay like if it's uh, for example I it's a very specific um, uh, subject so um, many of the times okay apart from the routine you know like redness of the eye or a pink eye or so uh, other doctors are not uh, um, qualified enough or uh, trained enough to actually uh, treat the, uh, the various pathologies of the eye so something like that. There are some spe specialities which are very specific. Now it has become like a niche uh, field. So uh, it's preferable if you uh, if you are interested in a particular subject and if you want to practice that, uh, it is again you know your own uh, uh, on your behest you can uh, opt for that speciality in the post graduation. Uh, you should pursue either MS or MD course and specialize in that. Uh, but uh, if somebody wants to, um, you know, uh, just uh, finish up with the MBBS and uh, not do anything further, uh, so they prefer to just uh, start practicing straight away, then again, yes, you can uh, do general, uh, uh, you know, uh, treatment of a patient. But uh, the specialized things uh, may not, like in radiology for that matter, yes, a doctor uh, with a basic MBBS uh, setup can, yeah, uh, Dr. Sandin may add, like for radiology, there is a lot of specialization uh, involved uh, in uh, various imaging. So uh, a radiologist could be the best uh, person, uh, if at all. But yes, uh, even a general uh, MBB may be able to. Okay. Actually, uh, due to some network connection, I didn't get quite get the question uh, properly. So what was it? If, can we practice start practicing immediately after MBBS without doing any specialization? Like, is that it? Opportunities, opportunities after MBBS. If one, immediately. Uh, one has well, uh, specifically radiology, uh, I think it will be difficult, I would say, because uh, this is based on my own experience, because in MBBS, uh, throughout MBBS time, radiology is considered a smaller subject, uh, which is just a sub part of uh, the medicine uh, posting. So you don't really get that much exposure to be able to uh, completely uh, pursue it and, you know, work independently. Maybe a few x-rays you could get some idea but it's uh, too specialized for someone to start doing just after MBBS it's yeah this needs um, some amount of training you cannot uh, directly do I feel okay. all right I hope we are able to answer the question and otherwise you can reformulate the question yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, that should be the question actually I guess so yeah uh, so anyone uh, willing to ask any question, please don't share away. You can ask in Hindi, Ladakh. So, yeah, yeah, any language, any language, seriously. 
is to uh, see like there are uh, several participants here and uh, yeah and uh, can you un unmute yourself please if you're seeing anything because we can't hear anything uh, and maybe uh, many of you are uh, new to the zoom platform so uh, you will need to uh, click dial in if you haven't in the left bottom corner and then uh, you can unmute yourself and ask questions I think you made everything pretty clear with the presentation. <laughs> so. Yeah, very unlikely that you know the presentation was so self-explanatory that none of the participants have any question to ask. Till then, in general, we uh, get a uh, lots of question about uh, medical side for admissions. Uh, so if you could say anything regarding that, uh, there's an option uh, like. Uh, for special for students from JNK. Now I don't know what happens after real Ladakh. It's always the case that they have to, they have to give a declaration that they haven't, <coughs> uh, uh, they have done their schooling from JNK or they haven't opted for any colleges in JNK, something like that. If I'm not uh, wrong, for all the medical aspirants, of, uh, who, uh, uh, this was the case. Uh, so lots of questions keep out popping out. Uh, uh, is it uh, what's the best uh, case that can be done or <clears throat> like in case of I guess uh, students who have done their uh, uh, 12th from Delhi uh, they uh, they also have to fill it that uh, they haven't applied for anything in JNK or something like that if I'm not wrong that question keeps on popping now now it's no longer applicable earlier it was uh, that uh, if you are a resident of, uh, of JNK and you you may not be able to appear for the All India PMT. That was the time that you need to get a, a letter signed, you know, by the court or so that you will not be appearing for your state medical exam. Now that uh, um, NEET has covered all the medical colleges uh, in the umbrella of NEET, it's all covered up. So this uh, issue of the domicile uh, should not be there, especially that now we, we are a union territory and uh, uh, JNK no longer has the special uh, domicile uh, status uh, uh, which it used to have so th this needs to get updated this year also because earlier um, there was this domicile thing that uh, was definitely there so students who are uh, who did their schooling from uh, Delhi and not from JNK or from JNK they may not they were not uh, eligible to appear so uh, Dr. Sanzen can you shed some light uh, to this question regarding yeah. the domicile part Okay, uh, so it's been many years since I gave to just like you. So uh, from uh, what I remember, we just had to bring an affidavit saying that I'm not applying for the other one. But there was always a way out to, you know, eventually end up giving both the exams. So that was really not that big of a big of an obstacle. Uh, so I knew of my friends who had given both the exams. So yeah, I think it's okay. You can do both somehow. And also, I think now that NEET is here, it that should not be an issue yeah also uh, you know uh, now that uh, J jnk jammu, jammu kashmir and ladakh are separate uts uh, so we all have to appear for an exam under the central government that is the neat exam and our seat distribution and in future we are going to have our own medical college in ladakh so our medical college will also have distribution of seats uh, according to uh, some percentage of seats to be filled by the uh, neat exam and some percentage of seats, uh, of course, by under NEET, but uh, uh, will be filled by the students belonging to Leilada, for that matter. For example, if there's a seat, uh, there are seats, set number of seats in uh, uh, in Lay Medical College or Ladakh Medical College. So uh, the portion of the seats, 50% or so, will be filled by uh, NEET aspirants, uh, who, uh, people who have cleared it all over the country, and 50% of the uh, thing, those who have qualified NEET exam, but they belong to Ladakh. So it's going to be filled like that. So things are different now. And uh, since uh, we uh, got the status of uh, UT just uh, uh, last year, so the new thing that distribution of seats and also distribution of specific seats in various medical colleges in Jammu and Srinagar, they will also go, go undergo a lot of changes because this is something new. And because of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, the clarification of uh, all these uh, minute details it's not very there and not very much there, but yes, things will eventually clear out. Okay, uh, thanks for that. Uh, there's 
one question that uh, I've got from someone. So uh, uh, he or she is asking that, uh, uh, is there any advantage uh, for studying in any region like specifically Delhi or being in JNK? Uh, is there any advantage in terms of uh, the colleges that you can apply for or is there any particular reservations like, uh, because uh, uh, says that, uh, uh, some heard from somewhere that uh, you know, for if you are a medical student, Delhi is the best place because you will get many opportunities. So, is it true, or uh, is there you know, if you get uh, shed some light on this one? Yeah, uh, definitely, it is true because Delhi has a good amount of medical colleges, and uh, uh, it's uh, 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 by rule, it's like if you have done your schooling class eleventh and twelfth from any Delhi school. Uh, you are eligible uh, for uh, if after clearing your NEET exam, that is, uh, you, you are eligible to uh, take up the seats uh, under the Delhi uh, Del, uh, Delhi uh, quota, you would say. Okay, so similarly, it, it is similar to other colleges also, even in Punjab and uh, Chandigarh, uh, the same rule applies. Uh, Delhi be, being, uh, uh, you know, a big city with a lot of medical colleges, like three for the matter, under Delhi University itself, then you have the IP University, uh, uh, VMNC, and now AIMS also. So um, if you have done your schooling from Delhi, then a lot many options are there for you. So yes, uh, Delhi um, uh, students who have uh, done the schooling from Delhi, they have, uh, you can say, uh, more chances of uh, getting lucky and getting a seat than other colleges. But in Chandigarh also the same rule applies, and uh, various other uh, states also. You know, uh, you uh, because there are some seats reserved for that uh, students belonging to that particular state, and those who have done schooling. Yeah, that. Uh, have you have any questions? You can ask uh, in the Daki Hindi as well. Sitting Lamu, Sevang Lamu, sorry. Do you have any questions? Don't shy away. <laughs> so I guess uh, most of the students are school students, so they might be shying away from saying anything. Uh, or, uh, uh, and yeah. I think in a question goes in a last comfortable link and I will just later. Simple question with not simple it's not a problem. Simple question with not cheating on this yellow. And the opportunity to allow in a moon lale, question cheat in a display. One thing regarding uh, that, uh, I also witnessed something like that, uh, like uh, I was uh, struggling or uh, accompanying someone, uh, um, uh, one of my cousins from medical background for a uh, counseling in Delhi, and uh, uh, they had 28 seats for Delhi uh, ST, and uh, out of that, only 18 people have qualified in ST, so 10 seats were vacant that goes to SC or other categories. Yeah, uh, don't look, yeah this is very disheartening, uh, and uh, I wanted to touch upon uh, this very topic uh, because, uh, you know, uh, I just could not cover it up in uh, my talk. Uh, so, uh, uh, like us as Ladakhis, you know, we are really lucky that we have uh, this extra, you know, um, edge. That, that we have this um, specialized favor or you can say the tool that we have of having the reservation. And in spite of that, you know, um, many of uh, the students um, uh, are not able to qualify uh, for the exam and many of the seats go vacant. And this is not this only for the undergraduate uh, exams, it's only also applicable to the postgraduate courses. There are so many postgraduate lucrative subjects, like interesting subjects, uh, be it uh, you know uh, uh, MCH, DM exams or uh, fellowships also, those courses are actually available uh, for uh, students specifically uh, you know granted for the uh, students under the scheduled prime ST category. But uh, you always see like many of times those those seats are vacant and then they later on put up for the general category also. So it's uh, it's. I guess you know we must um, you know uh, work harder and you know and try to utilize the opportunity given to us because this is something which one cannot take for granted and one must try to you know um, grab that opportunity as long as it's available to us. Yes, yes. That's, uh, that, that, that's very important. That's what I thought also as well because uh, in this particular instance uh, because uh, it was the case that she has uh, done her schooling from Jammu and Kashmir. That's why she could not qualify for that uh, uh, 28 people uh, and uh, because Delhi had more reservation in that as well. 
uh, even though her score was higher than other people, other people could get in. So uh, there's lot, lots of loopholes in this um, admission systems, whether it be medical or engineering, and uh, it, 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 uh, it's only gained through experience, like actually mentioned uh, that uh, this is the case that uh, lots of seats go vacant, and it's uh, and uh, what in general uh, understanding is uh, uh, if you're a medical aspirant and you are doing your appeal from Delhi, you have got greater opportunities, uh, if I understand. Uh, and uh, just on the other side, uh, what do we think of it? Uh, like uh, the, uh, students not being able to qualify for that, even um, those uh, like uh, not being able to qualify the entrance. Uh, we understand lots of people are hardworking, in, in, especially from the students. Um, they study a lot. And where do you think, uh, like uh, you have yourself uh, guided uh, your younger sister, actually, uh, Ajit Palkit, uh, and I understand that she's uh, one of the you know, very bright student uh, from the very early early time, and she has, on various occasions, uh, been uh, ranked uh, one in entrance. Uh, uh, that's what I understand. So, what do you think, like, uh, as a mentor, what do you suggest for this aspirants, how they can make it happen? So, you know, um, first and foremost, uh, for us, like, we should uh, just. Uh, concentrate on our own thing that uh, Ladakhi students per se, you know, uh, medical aspirants, any other professional uh, course aspirants, you, uh, we all should uh, have um, a good network of uh, connectivity, you know, we should uh, interact more with uh, our seniors, be it your immediate senior or be it a super senior, we should have a better communication uh, network with each other and also share because, you know, uh, the more you share, the more you learn and more you can bestow upon others. So students should not, uh, like just now like at this session, I want more and more students to come up and ask questions, but we are all withdrawing ourselves from asking questions, hesitating. So this hesitation can also, you know, be a factor that is making Ladakhi students lose upon so many opportunities. So I would request Ladakhi students, all the students here, you know, to not shy away and to come ahead, go like, you know, move forward. And, you know, it all starts from asking questions. Because if you have a doubt about your studies and your subjects, you should go and ask your teachers. You should discuss with your friends. You should not leave it or you should not dump it. You must move ahead and ask questions. You know, that is the first step. You know, it's about asking questions. The more questions you ask, the more, uh, you know, inquisitiveness um, that you show, then more uh, you grow and uh, you will learn more. And at the same time, you know, um, you can achieve your goal slowly and steadily. So networking, asking more questions, and also, uh, you know, uh, hard work, which I've covered so many times, <laughs> I've already repeatedly said. So yes, Ladakhi, uh, like we do, uh, like uh, otherwise, uh, in general, we have um, this hardworking nature, but it's about channelizing that hard work in the right direction and not giving half-hearted, um, not putting in half-hearted effort, but to put in whole-hearted effort towards our goal and also keeping in touch with the latest advancements. You, we are not only about other things that happen, but also in your field of interest, you should put in your best foot forward and learn the new things that are happening and try to you know, uh, inculcate in your daily learning. So that what, uh, that's what would, I think, give Ladakhi students an extra edge. Now that we have internet connectivity in all, even the villages of Ladakh, so that should not be uh, something which may withdraw you from saying that yeah, I do not have enough tools or so. So yes, I, uh, you should utilize the facilities that are available around you at your disposal and uh, interaction with uh, your fellows, interaction with your seniors and uh, your uh, colleagues around you. That is the most important thing. And uh, this shine nature, you should you know, uh, just dump. When it comes to your career, when it comes to your studies, you should not shy away, you should not hesitate. You should ask because I uh, felt that, you know, I was a shy person initially, but then during my uh, post-graduation and also the uh, early graduation days, uh, I realized that, you know, that is one thing that uh, it's very indigenous to the students from the plains. They are not shy. They keep on asking questions. And, and that could be the reason why they are excelling in uh, uh, their career because they want to learn and they don't want to, they do not shy away from learning new things. For us, we always keep reserved attitude, but okay, again, being reserved, there's nothing wrong with it. But when it comes to your education, knowledge, you should not have that attitude. You should be open and also open to accept more and more things. 
so that is uh, i think what is important and that's the reason why i guess we sort of lag behind a little so we should overcome that uh, and thanks that's for all. that insight from you and uh, one more thing uh, in terms of uh, people giving multiple uh, uh, option multiple uh, uh, what do you say try trying uh, again and again because what i see uh, people from down here or they try at least two to three times or even four uh, four to five times sometimes when even when they are in college and uh, people from us few people <clears throat> from our side they try once and then they just give up so uh, this might also be a difference so you need to be consistent if you're sure that you want to do it uh, uh, you, you you should attempt again and again uh, and, and make sure you get through uh, with uh, seeking proper guidance from mentors so that's very important again uh, like uh, to this first anyone has uh, anything to say anyone yeah, uh, we have yeah. hello Achu, hello yes yes Hello, actually, I just want to yeah. This is Tundu Dulkar. So I want to add one thing on this that one of the factors I feel is that we limit like we as Ladakhis like since we have this uh, scheduled tribe status. I just personally feel that we, most of us, we tend to limit our potential, you know, because of this because we take this for granted. And then this is one of the like major things that I feel. Uh, you know, we hard, we work hard too much that, to that extent that, okay, we, we know that we are going to get the college if we secure 50 percentile or something like that. So that is one of the reasons I feel could be one of the factors that lags us behind. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's also true. So. <clears throat> yeah, so I think because these days a lot of people are qualifying in open merit from uh, even after having scheduled drive status. There are many colleagues of mine who have qualified through open and they're doing really well. So we, this is one of the factors that we need to be aware of from very beginning, like before uh, for the UG as well. I think uh, students should, you know, like aim to qualify via open merit, then just, uh, you know, putting ourselves yeah. back for scheduled right status. Very, so that is one of the reasons. Yeah, true. Extremely, so uh, I think we should also remember, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, we should also so remember one thing that uh, now that we are a UT and of course uh, Ladakh is also developing at a good pace. So this status, the ST status might be stripped off any time. Uh, so yeah, we have exactly. to be mentally prepared as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's true. Uh, you, you, you covered this <coughs> important thing. I feel that uh, taking uh, this uh, ST status for granted is extremely uh, wrong because uh, that, that feeling of, you know, that inferiority complex looms around you uh, at every point of time, uh, going by my personal experience, even though I have friends uh, uh, who have very supportive and everything, who have, I never felt that I was any less than them at anything. But yes, you try to overcome that. I always felt that I should overcome my, if there are any, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, if there are uh, anything which I'm lacking, I should overcome that. So you work even harder and you try to, uh, you know, keep peace with the others and even try to improve yourself more. Yeah, I guess we can continue the discussion. You were saying something. Sorry, uh, we just missed it at the end during this time slot. Yeah, I, I was saying that well, whatever uh, Tundu Volker said that you know, uh, rest of other uh, rest of the uh, students or uh, rest of the world, they are moving ahead at a very fast rate, and us and just uh, sitting uh, thinking that uh, this uh, special status is a boon to us. We cannot just uh, lay lay down and you know uh, put our hands back and sit. Okay, nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change, but that's not true. Yes, uh, with the uh, as Dr. Sen said, uh, the UT status has been bestowed upon us. There are a lot of other, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, virtues, which we could, a lot of other um, opportunities that has already been stripped off uh, from us, which we are not aware at the moment. And at one point of time, we have to sit and, uh, and uh, appear for an examination. Uh, compared uh, like and compete with the uh, rest of the country and we should train ourselves to be good enough to excel in that field and it is again an ongoing thing not only for uh, medical students but uh, students from other fields as well and uh, yeah it's, it's the same case like uh, we have already faced this myself i've already faced this myself uh, in back in 2013 uh, of an, uh, 2013 no 2000, nine sorry so yeah <laughs> so when I, I was uh, going for the engineering side of things uh, because of uh, this uh, 
political uh, issues uh, the in delhi uh, they uh, strip of all the sts to one person from seven five person so only uh, one or two person can get in so uh, we had to fight back uh, cases in court and after that we got the admission of the four uh, months long struggle so that's uh, at that point which was uh, roughly uh, not seven more than 11 years ago roughly now so at that point of time uh, we have seen the struggle or the seen the change that's happening and evenly uh, people who were senior to us also warned us who were in the in fact uh, there, there was a car from uh, uh, national law school uh, uh, law school, uh, uh, and he was the first person and been with a uh, couple simple uh, and other work with other people as well. So he used to say that he faced the same issue in law school initially, and that's what we faced. And eventually, we can see that lots of seats has gone lost now. And again, with the special status gone, uh, it's always the case that when we talk about a career, okay, this. ST can help us to some extent, like uh, for your admission or even after that, but it cannot help you forever. So when you're talking about a career, uh, you are uh, talking about competing with people throughout the world. And, uh, and every career and every specialism is uh, something that you are competing. You will be the best when you're comp competing with uh, people throughout the world and not locally. So that's why we keep this Lampton platform open for if even people outside Ladakh or um, all the people, because when you talk about career guidance or anything, like uh, if we isolate ourselves uh, uh, as Ladakh only, then we might not do any well. Because again, career is something that's uh, uh, very important and uh, we are competing globally. So that's uh, anyone uh, uh, has to add anything? Anyone would like to say anything? Hello? Yes. Hello? Hello? Uh, Julele, uh, I'm pursuing MBBS from uh, Srinagar. Actually, I want to ask, uh, should we prepare for our PG entrance during our MBBS course or do we should uh, focus during the internship period? Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, so, uh, regarding preparation for your uh, PG entrance, uh, okay, am I audible? Yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay. So um, regarding preparation, so uh, many attempts like uh, starting from your uh, pre-final year, uh, you are offered like some of the uh, coaching institutes, they do offer uh, these uh, weekend classes or so, you know, where you can go and, uh, you know, attend the classes uh, that basically are directed towards the post-graduation exams. So I, I personally felt those, um, uh, you know, exams actually were quite helpful. And it's something which is not at all necessary or compulsory per se. But uh, it's something which keeps you on course because you are actually going through your uh, basic routine uh, postings and your uh, uh, classes and lectures. Apart from that, you know, if you have uh, something extra to look forward to and that, um, and also you have those bi-weekly uh, exams or mock tests, you know, those give, give you uh, uh, an opportunity to improve upon yourself and to uh, tell you where you stand. So I felt personally that uh, those uh, uh, just, I think, uh, weekend uh, classes in your pre-medical, uh, uh, sorry, pre-final year's uh, time and uh, which go on towards final year and then uh, internship, that um, those classes are quite helpful. Of course, it's something which you cannot be getting uh, totally overwhelmed with. But uh, yes, um, uh, and also you should not get anxious about it if you're not able to, uh, you know, strike a balance between your lectures and your postings and that class and the classes as well. So you can take it easy. But yes, uh, and that actually helps in keeping in touch with what is going to be forward because ultimately now, uh, you know, uh, right after MBBS, majority 99% of the students uh, would like to go ahead and uh, appear for a specialized degree in post-graduation and then go on forward to do something else also even beyond that. And as we are already discussing that more and more of us should pursue that because we have to uh, be um, in the top, uh, you know, uh, career-wise and profession-wise. So yes, uh, if you are uh, still uh, in, uh, the, in the midst of your uh, MBBS screening, so that will help. And again, you know, I would uh, invite other doctors like Dr. Sanzen can shed some light on it as how she thinks about it, how she feels about it. But, uh, even uh, yeah. Uh, but I would. Okay. Should I speak? Yeah. Yeah. 
okay so uh, about uh, preparing from before i say it if it's possible if it's feasible then yes why not because it the whatever they're teaching you in uh, say coaching center for post graduation preparation it's only going to be useful to you because this is a kind of information that you need anyway as a doctor you need to know those things so it's not going to be of any harm unlike you know in 11th and 12th class you have to do a lot of physics which you eventually may never be using it during mbbs but this is a kind of information that you will uh, use it or you will at some point of time will definitely benefit out of knowing this so there is no harm in preparing for it beforehand as long as it's feasible and as long as you're not getting completely stressed out uh, because of doing that and from what i remember in my final year or was it pre final year uh, we used to take those uh, weekend classes dams classes and even during internship we did take uh, coaching classes so it depends on your posting because some of the postings are highly strenuous and your body cannot really take it up and sometimes if you are very unlucky during your internship just before the exam you end up having the most uh, uh, heavy duty r uh, posting so you have to be prepared because you cannot completely you know uh, say in the end use it as an excuse that okay because my internship was hard and just before the exam i could not do it you have all the time earlier so yeah i mean i think i feel uh, it's better if you can because it's not going to do any harm to you yeah okay thank you yeah thank you for the question yeah <laughs> yeah so anyone any, anyone has any other questions you would like to ask uh, uh actually i think there has to be a different session for dentistry as well because uh, what people have assumed that you know medicine and dentistry is all together the same thing so we need to build that gap actually so for yeah, dentistry yeah. there has to be a different session yeah i would suggest because yeah. uh, one of the factors is this that like we have a combined exam but eventually it uh, tends to be totally different you know so i feel there has to be a different session mm -hmm. yeah, yeah sure we will have a dental session as well uh, on coverage coming mm -hmm. sessions yeah so uh, hopefully sure and uh, for all the medical professionals going forward uh, i guess, I guess uh, there should be more and more sessions uh, within medical profession for whether it's people from the dog or outside as well uh, at least uh, once every month uh, which is on a common platform and discussing all the challenges in that particular profession or anything new just as a, a continuous profession development uh, uh, as a part uh, and wherein all the mentors can add in and mentees can have regular support as well so uh, if there's no other questions uh, i would suggest uh, okay uh, uh, we, anyhow we are posting this video uh, as well on online uh, uh, where there might be lots of viewers um, as and when we get more questions, uh, we'll just uh, forward it to you, actually. Um, and that would be good. And it's really good to see you both uh, simultaneously on this platform, really. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's always, always uh, really, it's always been a pleasure uh, uh, looking at the success stories or the achievements that you have. Good to see you it 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 does it takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of determination you know uh, to do what you're doing especially when it's totally selfless and you're doing it for the students and i i'm sure majority of the students don't even realize okay that amount of hard work that you're putting in uh, to make all these sessions happen to make all those um, you know posts and everything social media working on that so it's really commendable and really we are really proud of you uh, yeah, because definitely. It's great to you know see you doing so well, and I wish that Nodaki students, everyone else also you know appreciates the effort. They realize that you know they try to exploit this uh, you know opportunity as much as possible. Yeah, I would say I have a good team, so there's a lot of team members on call as well. So yeah, yeah. Cool. thanks, thanks to all of them. Uh, okay, uh, it, it was really good, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, I've always uh, seen uh, from the childhood as well uh, the way you've gone through. You both, especially, have gone through from schooling to college and everything. Everywhere uh, we used to hear a lot, and um, uh, to some extent, you were a source of inspiration for us as well. So, uh, yeah, really thanks for that. And uh, going forward, uh, we hope that there will be more sessions in the medical front and 
for we, we start with the medical side so we start with nursing then mbbs and next maybe uh, uh, bds and then going forward in the engineering side or other other streams because there's endless streams and uh, what we uh, are trying to do here is we are trying to encourage people uh, to connect uh, uh, with relevant mentors uh, which to some extent we feel that's still missing or people are shying away to do that and that's uh, the reason why they're not getting ahead in those career and their career as well so even in my engineering site if i give you example even, okay i have mentors i have mentors from the uk or uh, people uh, who are not even lucky because uh, you may you may no longer find any relevant mentors uh, or from your own region. Uh, so it's very important that uh, when you talk about career, you talk about uh, you're competing with global workforce. So we should uh, look at this aspect as globally, not locally. True. Uh, True yes. Anyone has anything to say? Else we can end the session uh, and thank all our. Uh, Host and mentors. mentors. Okay, thank I you. guess. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thanks, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Right. Cheers. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Stay <laughs> safe. <laughs> Bye. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Ramstan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ajile, Ajay, Sonam, and Ajis Palgit. Oh, welcome. Nice to see you both. <laughs> yeah, same here. Same here. <laughs> Take care. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye.